Wasn't that awesome? That was wonderful. I'm like, God's really moving and prayer really works. It's, it's well, we're going to jump in. We've been talking about this for a few weeks. Uh, we've, we've looked at the scripture several times, and I want to focus where it says, if my people, that's us, called by my name, humble themselves and pray. We need to pray. That's the first thing God is asking us to do. Before we go out into the world, before we tackle any of the good works he's asked us to do, we go in prayer and humility first to the throne room. That's where we get our marching orders. That's where we get our strength. We can't go ahead of that process, right? We've got to pray first, and we're seeing it happen. It's not just here at this body. There are people called across the world right now that the Holy Spirit is calling us to pray. He's calling us to get on our knees, to get on our face, to get into our closets, to into our war rooms, and intercede like, it, like the world depends on it, because it does. Lives depend on it. And that's where we begin. And I'm really excited to talk about a month of prayer and fasting that we're going to be initiating here at Abiding Harvest starting right after our fall kickoff. We'll give you more details about what that looks like, but our plan is to pray as a body every single day. And there are different ways that we can pray every day. We're going to have a prayer guide for those of you that want to pray individually or with your families. We're going to have a Zoom link where we can log in together and pray in real time together, virtually. So those of us that are here today and those of us that are joining us by Facebook or are in different cities can be a part of this time of intercession and walking into the throne room. We also have opportunities to pray right here every morning and on Tuesday nights here. We'll talk more about that. We're also hoping to fast every single Friday. Now, fasting looks different to different people. Some people will fast the whole day. Some people might fast a meal. Some people might fast something else God has told you to. But we want to, as we pray, fasting and prayer, they go together. If we look in the scripture, they go together because prayer is our spiritual service, but our flesh can get in the way, right? And fasting, well, it can, it can help us to crucify our flesh, to have dominion over our flesh. So we're excited about this. We've, I've had so many people come to me over the last week saying, I know the Holy Spirit is calling us to prayer. I know he's calling us to, to intercede, to get into the word, to really stand up and represent our country, but I'm not really sure how. What do I do? Do you have a recommendation? I think people are feeling a little bit like, I want to do this. Show me, give me, uh, help, some direction. So we want to provide that so that we're doing it in unison, in real time together with one heart and one mind and one accord. So I got to tell you, prayer is it's a discipline. And for me, for most of my life, it was a big snore. It was a big bore, and I got very irritated with people who were very verbose in their prayers, especially before mealtime. My view was, look, pray for the food and the fellowship, but don't pray for, I mean, people would go on and on, and I'm like, my stomach is gurgling. I almost want to interrupt and say, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, let's go. Prayer, I didn't, my heart wasn't prepared to understand what a privilege, what an honor, and what an empowering experience prayer was. You know, I would go to friends and I would say to them, you know, I'm dealing with this problem, and really I just wanted to complain, right? Right? And my very spiritual friends would say, okay, well, let's pray about it right now. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait, I didn't call for that. I just wanted to complain. I just wanted an ear to talk to. And the sad thing is I was the same way with God. I would go to him and kind of woe is me and this is what's going on and I just can't get in control of this and I'm still bound with this and Lord help me. But every time he tried to speak to me, it was like I, I, I couldn't hear him. Because I didn't recognize that this was a call into the throne room. This was a call to relationship. This was a call to dialogue. This was a call to intimacy. I just thought it was something I was supposed to do as a Christian. And I would just say something. My mind would water, water, wander. 
my, my mind doesn't water on a regular basis. Um, my eyes do, but anyway, prayer, I just didn't get it. I didn't get the appeal for so many years or the necessity until I was desperate. You know, there's nothing like pain to push you into the throne room of God. Nobody wants pain, but I will tell you, C.S. Lewis called it God's megaphone. And I hear God really loud when I am at the end. You know, all my scorecards are reading zero. I've got nothing to show for my life, and I don't see it going anywhere. And that's really where I found myself about the time that I joined this church. Ten years ago, all my scorecards were zero, and I didn't have any prospects. And finally, I saw God as my last chance. And I began to reach out to him. And I got into a 12-step program, and my sponsor told me every day, pray. Whether you believe he hears you or not, pray. Whether you think he's next to you or not, pray. Whether you expect anything or not, pray. Just do it. Do it every day. And I said, God, every morning, I said, God, I don't know what to do, but you do. See, this was the problem. I focused on the problem. I kept going to God with my problems. Here's my problem. Here's my failure. Here's woe is me, pitiful me, Mr. Excuse Maker. But he wants me to focus on the miracle maker. When I pray, I focus on God's glory, his power, his desire to rescue me, to change me, to sit with me, to counsel me, to indwell me. I had it all backwards. Believe me, if I'm focusing on me in prayer, no wonder it's a big snore. I'm pretty boring on my own. I'm not interesting talking about my problems, but God, God came and he answered my prayers and he sat with me and I learned who he was for the first time. God often waits until we're desperate. In Psalm 18.6, it said, In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to him into his ears. And that's where I was. That's where I was. I was desperate. I didn't have any more to say. I needed to listen. I needed to trust. Because I didn't have any other options. And God shows up. You know, God is not so proud that he doesn't mind being your last option. How many of you would want to be asked on a date after the guy, guy was turned down by five other girls? Anybody feel special? Oh, I'm the sixth one you've asked? They all said no? Gee, thanks. God loves us enough to be sixth or seventh or eighth. He loves us enough that we go down every road to avoid him. He's still there. He's still the father waiting for us to come home with his arms open and with a ring and a robe. He's there for us, and he loves us. People talk about his love. I never experienced intimacy with anyone or anything until I had those moments of God, with God, sitting on my couch in the morning, every morning at daybreak. In Psalm 145, 18, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. In Hebrews, it says, and let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence. He welcomes us in. He doesn't ask you for your backstage pass. He's waiting for you to come and crawl up on his lap. He'll put his arms around you, and he'll love you. You'll feel his heart beating heart right up against your ear and his breath that he takes with you. That's the way I felt with the Lord. Last week, Pastor Chris sang a song. What was that song anyway? Do you remember? It sounded like something from the Jesus Movement days. I wasn't sure. Uh, but during this time when I woke up every morning, God gave me this song. And so I'm, I don't sing as well as Chris, but I want to sing a little bit of the song that he put in my heart during that time because that's how I felt, and it's how I still feel. And it goes like this. At daybreak when I rise, how I long to meet with you. Gaze into your eyes, be transformed by your truth. Come and sit a while with me, your glory I may see. And then I hear your still, small voice gently beckon me. 
goes on from there. But there was, I just wanted to sit with him. And I just wanted to shut my mouth. You know, prayer sometimes is listening. I wanted to shut my mouth and look at him and let him change me. And that's exactly what he did and continues to do. But I'll tell you, you know, prayer is an acquired taste. The yum will come. That is my, 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 uh, my ad- admonishment. If you don't love praying, you will if you do it. You'll start to love it. You'll start to look forward to it, like visiting your best friend. It's amazing. I mean, I got to tell you, I'm not a morning person, but for the last couple of months, I've been meeting with several people every morning here at 5.30 a.m. for prayer. I enjoy it. It's not like, this martyr thing, oh, I'm going to go at 5.30, aren't I a wonderful spiritual guy? It makes the difference for my day as we pray for our church, we pray for one another, and we pray for revival. You know, I got a text from Lene and Carlos a few, a couple of months ago, and they're saying, hey, we're going to pray all night tonight. You want to come? And I'm like, what, you're going to pray what, all night? <laughs> yeah, we're going to pray all night. And I'm like, like, till morning? said, well, we're praying for revival. We're praying for people to get set free. We're pe- praying for people to get saved. we got to pray. God's going to do it, so let's pray. I mean, I'm, well, if you put it that way, you know, I will come. Now, I can only stay about four hours, but the very next day, here we are, and they're trooping in for 5.30 prayer after praying all night. Are they grumbling? Are, they, are their eyes downcast? No, they are got energy. The Holy Spirit had moved. It was a pleasure. So whatever you think about prayer, if it isn't 100% positive, you you don't understand it yet. Do it, and you're going to find it's going to be this undiscovered, untapped miracle in our lives. My good friend Marie, the lovely lady in purple, uh, she is a prayer warrior. And I will tell you, um, I won't tell her age, but she's a senior citizen. She used to be a missionary on the mission field. She used to run left and right. I couldn't keep up with her when I first met her. And, you know, life changes a little bit. The opportunities get a little bit smaller. The ability to go out and evangelize left and right and travel the world, those doors have been closing. But she prays every day, and those prayers are as effective as all that she did. We have prayer warriors in this church who are moving mountains every day. And Marie always just talks about it as my time with the Lord. Because that's her time with her Abba. That's her time where he says, I love you. And I know things are hard. Marie's not going to be somebody that's going to complain, but I'll tell you, she's dealing with a lot of stuff. We deal with a lot of stuff in this life. And yet, no matter how difficult it is or how many tears she cries, she takes and she meets with God and he puts his arm around her, and he speaks to her. And I will tell you, there's many times after her time with the Lord that there's a word for me that I needed. So never dismiss or think of prayer as some added thing in your life. It's the thing. Our lives should be a prayer. There's a wonderful song by Keith Keith Green. Let my life be a prayer to you. I would advise you to look at that in YouTube and listen to it every day this next month. Let my life be a prayer to you. It's our whole life. It's not just a little part. It's not just the icing on the cake. It's the cake. When we pray, God answers our prayers. Imagine that. The prayer of faith will yield an answer. In John 3, 1 John 3, 22, And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. In Philippians 4, 6, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. In Jeremiah 29, then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Prayers do not come back in vain. Things happen. And I will tell you, when I started praying, to my surprise, things happened. When I said, God, keep me sober today, you know what? He did. And I haven't had a drink since then. And that's to the Lord, his power, not mine. And it was so exciting. 
I kept saying, God, I know I need to surrender to you. This is my problem. Anybody have a problem with surrender? It's hard. We're, we're fleshly creatures without Christ. And I knew there were many things I hadn't surrendered to God. I hadn't put my weapons down. And I said, God, I need your help. I need your help. And the next day I go to my email and I open it up. And it says, a recommendation for you. Absolute Surrender by Andrew Murray. I'm thinking, now I know, I know people think our computers listen to us and stuff, but that was a silent prayer to God saying, help me surrender. So I don't think my computer was listening to me. The Holy Spirit was listening to me. And that book, if you have a problem with surrender, read that book. It was amazing. The very same day, I was praying about things in the Bible I didn't understand. There were some hard truths in the Bible that I struggled with. I'm like, God, help me, help me. And the very next day, the Bible study I was listening to online answered that question. Every question I had, those specific questions, it was all there. I'm like, God, wow. Now, I will confess, I went out and bought a lottery ticket that day. I thought, God, you really love me. And I will tell you, I had these wonderful visions of my ministry by yacht, you know, up and down the coast. Now, I will say God didn't provide that for me. I think he was more interested in changing me than he was in giving me stuff I probably was not ready to handle. But I want to tell you something else that he answered in my life. I prayed that God would bring godly men into my life. So many of us men wander around like wounded soldiers that went AWOL, and we don't have a band of brothers, and we don't have people to put us in the right direction, and we're like the wind back and forth. And I will tell you that God provided that for me in so many amazing ways. I got a fantastic sponsor with my recovery group, and I got to tell you, our pastor is my brother. He's my brother. I told him everything I ever did. He seen me good, bad, and indifferent, and he loves me, and he walks with me. He's my boss. He's my Christian mentor, but he's my brother. He's my friend. That was a miracle to me. Today I noticed that Barbara Norris uh, was having her shoes admired. And uh, I walked by and said, what about my shoes? They weren't that impressed until I told them, Dr. Buskirk bought these shoes for me. You know, he, from the time I came here to this church, blessed my life. Um, I'm in seminary now. Because of him, I would never be able to afford Asbury Seminary, Asbury Seminary without the scholarship that I have. And I have no illusions that that scholarship came because of my gifts and abilities and reputation. I would, had no right to that. There are many more qualified people. But he went to bat for me because he saw something. And the last conversation, lengthy conversation I had with him was after I preached uh, a message on the Holy Spirit, and he called me at home. And I, it was a missed call. I'm like, Dr. Buskirk's calling me. You know that, like, ooh. <laughs> you have to understand, I grew up with Dr. Buskirk. You know, I grew up in this town. I knew who he was. I knew what he meant. I knew what God had done in his life. And the fact that he even knew my number was awesome. And so I called him back, like, please answer. And he didn't say a lot. He said, you know, I just want you to know, you handled the word of God well today. That, that, that sermon could have been preached in about any pulpit in this, in this country. Well, that's all I wanted to say to you. Have a blessed day. And I just felt 20 feet tall. Every man needs another man to call out that manhood in him. When I feel like a little boy too small for his armor, and I have somebody like Dr. Buskirk saying, you handled the word of God well today, I, I could because he saw it when I couldn't see it. And we all need that. And if there's anything he's left for us to carry on, it's that. Let's see it in our brothers. Let's call it forth and then walk together in strength for that battle. And that was answered prayer for me. And that's made all the difference, having brothers that I walk with.
and having affirmation from godly men. I've also found that God answers prayer not just for me. Isn't that great? He answers for lots of folks. Um, Pam Smucker, my dear friend on the front row, um, when she was a teenager, her mother was strong in the Lord and took her family on a ministry journey around the country, basically following the Holy Spirit every day with limited finances. In a little, What kind of car was it? A Pinto station wagon. Yes, I want you to picture that for a minute. They camped out in campgrounds, sometimes didn't know where their next meal was going to go, and just prayed for direction. And there was, there was a crossroads. I guess, were you in California? They were in California, and her mom had been fasting and praying. Where do we go next? What are we supposed to do? And suddenly, in the sky, a map was drawn. Looking up at the, it was a night sky, right? Looking at Daytime. Okay, well, thanks. You can help me with the story. Suddenly, there was like a a point of light, and then it moved up the coast and showed exactly where she was supposed to go. Now, I'll tell you, I know Pam very well. She doesn't tell miracle stories left and right. She's not the kind of person that sees a miracle behind everything that happens. These kind of things, I believe this happened. And it wasn't just her that saw it, her brother, her mom. And, And because they were relying on the Lord, and they were asking, and they were fasting, and they were praying. And they were desperate, and God moved in miraculous ways. Are we desperate enough? Have we had enough? Have we had enough of a church that's asleep? I love what Terry said. Let's get out of our pajamas and into our armor. We were born for a time like this. We were prepared in advance, chosen in advance for good works. It's time to do those good works. Are we desperate enough that people are dying and going to hell? Are we desperate enough that Jesus' name is being slandered in the streets? Are we desperate enough that people are going to eternity without knowing the Lord? Marriages are breaking apart. Children are aimless and abandoned. People are stuck in addictions of every kind. We have the only answer, but we need to pray. We need God to move. Are we desperate enough to abandon all of our schemes and strategies and simply follow what God has called us to do in a consistent manner? We need to be, it is written, people. I loved when Terry said that. We have to be guided by the Word of God. When we pray, when we act, it's based on His eternal truths. We use Scripture when we pray. We do not dictate to God how it's going to be. Jesus is our model. He said, Thy will be done, not my will be done. So we don't go to God and say, Bless my plans. We go to God saying, give me my marching orders. Open my ears and my heart to hear and empower me to actually walk in that. I also believe it's important to speak forth our prayers. I thought prayer was just this little silent, quiet thing, like God had to read my mind. But you know what? When I pray, I want everybody to hear me. I want the demons to hear me. I want them to know they've got no hold on my life, that we will overcome There's power in our tongue. Salvation comes when we confess with our mouth. Out of the abundance of our heart, our heart, our mouth speaks. We need to speak out loud our prayers. Speak out loud the promises of God, His Word. There's power in that. The primary purpose of the body of Christ is prayer. In Isaiah it said, Even those I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable in my, in my honor, but my house will be called the house of prayer for all peoples, all nations, all tribes, all tongues. What we saw today on this stage is going to be multiplied exponentially. Everyone is called to pray. And we're called to pray together. Corporate prayer is powerful. In Matthew 18, it says, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you agree about anything and ask for it, it will be done. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. In James, we have the prayer of faith. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders, the group, to come and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and to confess our sins and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Prayer is healing. We get out 
our flesh, our inadequacies, our sin. We pray for one another. We can't do that alone. It requires the body to come together and intercede for one another. In Acts, remember the story of Paul and Silas? They're in the prison. There's just two of them. They start praising God and praying together. And what happened? The earth shook. It set them free. And I think the jailer got saved too, right? Do you remember in Acts 12 when Peter was rescued? The whole church was praying for him. And he was set free. An angel came and took him right out. Prayer yields power. After Peter and John were released, you remember when they healed the lame guy at the temple? And they were, to- they were arrested, and they were told not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And they said, well, yeah, yeah, whatever, we're going to preach in the name of Jesus. Well, when they came home, they gathered with the church, and they prayed. And the place where they gathered together was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they continued to speak of the Word of, the word of God with boldness. When we pray together, the Holy Spirit comes. We're shaken. Our lives are shaken. And boldness comes. If we want to see revival, we want to see change, and we want to see people set free, we've got to make this a commitment. And, of course, where it all started, in Acts 2, the day of Pentecost, they're all together in one room, in one accord, in one voice, praying and interceding. And what happened? The church was born. And we are that church. We are that church. Let's be born again. Let's revive. Let's get up. Let's get moving. We have an opportunity to do that. Answered prayer, we're going to see prayers answered. And what does that do? It's an encouragement. When I hear you tell me how God answered your prayer, I know he'll answer my prayer. When he answers a prayer in your life, he'll answer a prayer for our nation. It fosters gratitude. We need to be a thankful people. And when we pray and God answers, we're grateful. It leads to persistence. God doesn't always answer a prayer right the moment we pray it. I was talking to Kay tonight. She prayed for her dad day after day after day after day after day, year after year, and he got saved. Same thing, Carlos and his uncle. His uncle was resistant to the Lord, but he prayed, and they persisted, and they prayed, and they persisted, and they didn't give up, and he got saved. And a week later, he went home with the Lord unexpectedly. And also, it's a testimony The world needs to hear that there's a God who hears prayer. The world needs to know they're not trapped in their darkness. The world needs to know there's a way out and a way forward. It's a testimony. It's a witness. It's a tool of evangelism. But we're not going to have answered prayers if we don't pray. So I want to just talk about some opportunities. We talked a little bit about that. But I'd like for you to prayerfully consider joining us as much as possible in this season of prayer and fasting. And to continue it beyond that, this is a lifelong journey. I ate breakfast yesterday, but that's not going to help me tomorrow. I prayed yesterday, that's not going to help me tomorrow. I have to pray. I have to go forward. But this will be a chance for us to build those habits. Every morning, you are welcome right here at 5.30 a.m. Come join us. It's multilingual, English, Spanish, and Holy Spirit. And whatever language you want to bring, come and pray it. We're here. Tuesday nights, Gary Jenks leads a group at 7 p.m., interceding, praying. Every single week, you're welcome to join. Audience of One, come to Audience of One. It is the most transforming experience. We praise, we pray, we pray, we praise, we pray, we pray, we praise, we, we, things happen. Come, it's once a month, Thursday, 7 p.m., be here. Home teams are time to pray together with your small groups. On Wednesdays, there's soaking prayer. We'll have praise music. It'll be dim. We can sit in these comfy blue seats we talked about and let the Lord and the Holy Spirit just pour over you and participate in this month of prayer and fasting. Do it to whatever degree you can. And if you miss a day or you don't fast, don't let there be condemnation. You do what you do and you just keep doing it. And the Lord will work it out in your lives. So I encourage you, let's pray together, let's humble ourselves, let's expect God to answer those prayers, and let this church be a beacon of God's presence to the world. So I'd like to just invite the uh, praise team to come on up. If anyone would like to be prayed for, please join us at the, at the uh, kneelers. Ask the Lord to speak to you now about your prayer life, how it can be more effective, more efficient, more productive, and more powerful. 
We come against any condemnation for people feeling like maybe they haven't done enough praying. It's okay. God's patient. He'll work with us. He'll develop it in us. I promise wherever you're at, the yum will come. So I just welcome you right now to have an expectation that God is going to move in our midst and move in your life through prayer. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. We have prayed for this day for so long. Thank you. Thank you for your freedom, God. Your freedom makes us free to run into your presence. Don't run from him anymore. Run to him this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that our weapons, our prayer, our weapons, our thanksgiving, our weapons, our worship.
bless you in the name of Jesus.
When the Spirit of the Lord moves in my heart, I will love like Jesus loves. When the Spirit of the Lord moves in my heart, I will love like Jesus loves. Like Jesus prayed, when the Spirit of the Lord moves in my heart, I'm gonna pray like Jesus. 